And here is Mason Miller, right-handed pitching prospect in the Oakland A's organization. Mason, thank you so much for taking the time to hop on the podcast and, and talk about what was an awesome season. I, I wish I'm very excited to see you throw even more, but man, you made up for lost time with what you did at the end of the year and in the Arizona Fall League. And really excited to hear about what you've been working on this offseason. But again, thanks so much for taking the time, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So let's just start with last year because you got a bit of a late start with, with a shoulder strain, right? And uh, you come back and usually when, when you're coming back from an arm issue, it, you know, you don't know how the velo is going to be. You don't know totally how you're going to feel. It seemed like that wasn't really an issue for you. It seemed like you were good to go from the jump and, and the velo came back very quickly. How, how was it kind of coming back with a late start to the season it was still kind of your first real pro season other than the, the brief cameo you had after the draft. How, how was it getting your feet back under you? And then you know, how important was that Arizona Fall League stint where it really seemed like that was your coming out party there uh, and you, you put on a show in terms of velocity and also just pitchability out there? Yeah, yeah, I was really excited for for last season coming in the spring. I was feeling really good for my first pro, first full pro year. Um, so to go down with the injury was really disappointing. Um, but kind of took that time to learn a lot about me, um, what my body needs, um, and then kind of just progress through the throwing program and get back to mound work. Obviously, it was a little slower than I wanted to to be. I didn't want to wait till August to make my debut. Um, but fortunately, you know, I, my goal kind of turned into just making it back for the end of the year there um, and not making the whole year a, a wash. Um, so getting the six starts in the regular season or five starts, whatever it ended up being, um, and then being able to go to the fall league and throw another six starts. Um, I think it was really good for me in my career. Um, you know, like you said, as a coming out party, you know, getting some people aware who I am, showing them what I have um, in my organization and, you know, in baseball in general. Um, and then just for me, you know, the confidence to to do that, you know, have that to look back on last year and then, you know, look forward to this year and build on what I was able to do in those last three months. Yeah, what what did you really feel like Mason Miller again? Because I know I know shoulder stuff can be a little funky, and 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 also just kind of you know finding that comfort and and cutting loose again. Obviously, you were cutting loose by by the time I saw you in the Arizona Fall League. But you know, at what point did you kind of feel like yourself again on the mound and have that confidence to to let it fly, and, and also just have that comfort? Did, did you feel like the, the slow build back and and the time that it took to come back kind of gave you that that comfort from from the get go, or did it take a few starts to kind of get your feet under you? Because it was a unique case also. So where, you know, you kind of went straight to, you know, more challenging competition than most pitchers do. And then, of course, went to the Arizona Fall League where it's a mixed bag. But there's all I would very much argue that it's hitter heavy out there with a lot of very talented bats out there. I'd agree. And the ball flies in Arizona. Yes, too. That, there's no yes. way around that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think at least at the point I am in my career where it's still rather early on, I think it was good that we weren't really trying to rush back. Uh, we took our time time got what I needed to get in uh, made sure I was at a good point where I kind of went through you know some of those growing pains of getting back um, before I kind of got on the mound obviously like getting hitters back in the box and adjusting to you know game speed and the competition um, that took a couple starts I, th I felt like by the time I was uh, finishing up in Lansing and heading to Vegas you know I was kind of hitting my stride um, obviously I had a had a good start in Vegas my first outing and then second one I got hit around a little bit um, but really by the time I was headed to the fall league, I felt, I felt really good about where I was at. So how was that jump? Because again, you, you rarely see the, the high a to, to triple a jump. Obviously it was just a matter of, you know, that was the team that was probably still playing. Um, and, and it was an opportunity that they knew, Hey, you know, Mason can hang here with the stuff that he's got. If, if he's feeling good, he'll be able to throw and triple, but it's obviously a much different environment because maybe you get away with a bit more in high a the zone uh, from hitters I've talked to and pitchers I've talked to. Triple A seems to be the 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 area where you finally see that zone really start to tighten up, like the big leagues a bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that jump for you? Because you, you mentioned you had the one really good start, you had the one where it wasn't as sharp, but you still were able to to, to get guys out and, and showed a lot of you know what we saw continued into the fall league. How was that jump for you, and 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 how did you kind of mentally prepare for that? Because again, it's pretty rare to see you know a guy go from high A to triple, uh, especially as they're coming back from from time off. Yeah, like you said, I think it was more bridging that gap from high A season ending to um, the 
the fall league starting. Um, but like you said as well, you know, I do think my stuff plays regardless of the level. Um, so to grab that experience, even just those two starts and be around the guys for two weeks was really valuable for me. Um, you know, I went from being one of the older guys in the clubhouse in Lansing to probably one of the youngest in Vegas. So just having that perspective on things and, you know, being able to learn from guys that have been doing it a lot longer than I have, you know, that was really valuable for me, even though it was just a short little glimpse there. When did your stuff kind of start ticking to the point that that it is at now? Because this is something that, you know, again, on, on this podcast, we're always trying to let people know about you know, who's coming up in the minors, who's turning heads, who's doing things. And and I think, you know, Oakland fans and people within the organization are well aware of, of, of what you are doing and what you're on your way to doing. But, you know, there's some some fans around the game that may not know, you know, what, what you're able to do at this point. And at, at what point did the fastball start touching triple digits? At what point was was the curveball a banger? Like, when did you start to see that stuff just tick up to another level? Of course, you're drafted in the third round out of Gardner-Webb after that COVID year. But you know, at what point did the stuff really start ticking up into, man, I can just really overpower guys? Yeah, yeah. No, I, spent, I spent my first four years of college at a small Division three school. Um, struggled for my first couple of years there. Um, and in 2018, which was the end of my sophomore year, that was when I received the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. Um, and that was kind of when, you know, health wise and performance wise, everything kind of flipped on for me. You know, I was able to, to start making the games I needed to in the weight room on the baseball field. Um, I think that year I was two to four. And then, you know, each year after that, it's been kind of like a steady progression with the VLO. Um, so, you know, once I was able to get my body right health wise, that was when, you know, my career started taking off. And I know you, you've probably talked about it ad nauseum at this point, but you know, that's what happens when you have a remarkable story like yours and, and, and such a inspirational story to a lot of other people who, you know, may be diagnosed with, with type one diabetes, but how did you, at what point did you realize like, man, this is not how I should feel. And um, did you just feel like a different person once you were able to take care of that? Like, obviously you're able to put the weight on, you're able to put the strength on. And was it almost like this moment of, wait, this is how you're supposed to feel when you're on the field. Like I, I didn't realize that the whole time. Like what was, what was that feeling for you? Like it, it, it's almost something that in a weird backwards way might've been relieving to, to figure out. Like, I just would love to know what, what that whole mental process was like in terms of just digesting and understanding what you just found out yeah no i mean i went through the shock the first couple of days for sure of you know this is is this actually happening this is i'm something i'm gonna live with for the rest of my life um but you know figuring out that i was able to do everything i was doing previously um uh, feel much better from a health standpoint just in day-to-day -day life um and just you know understand you know why my body's affected by certain things the way it is you know, there's power and the knowledge that you have. So when I was able to kind of harness that and, you know, I always worked hard before that, you know, my struggles in baseball weren't really like a work effort or, uh, you know, how driven I was. Um, so to have that effort that I was putting in finally start to pay off was, was super encouraging. So I kind of hit my stride with, you know, I've always said guys in high school or, you know, the guys getting drafted their junior year of college where it's, you know, here we go. I'm, can't wait to get into pro ball excited you know that that flame um that sometimes the grind of like a minor league season might might dim a little bit um you know I feel I feel like I'm at a later stage in my career where I'm kind of having that that moment you, you know where I'm excited about the opportunities ahead of me and it's not to discredit you know other guys that have been doing it for a couple of years but you know, I feel like I kind of have a leg up on some guys because of how fresh I feel and how you know excited I am about the opportunities ahead of me well, I'd argue that when you average 99.5 miles per hour on your fastball, you got a leg up on most guys and 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 you're beyond the fastball. You've got great stuff. And I'm excited to get into the arsenal with you a little bit there, too. I would love to know at, at what point you realized that, you know, this could be an option for you, that professional baseball was in the cards because you mentioned, you know, struggling at points at a division three school, you know, and, and then getting to the point where you are getting drafted in the third round. And, and of course, where you're at now. Uh, at what point did you realize like this could happen for you, not only to play professionally, but excel professionally? Yeah, I think I think out of high school, it was completely off the table, not in my wildest dreams. But uh, I had a really strong junior year, my first year after my diagnosis. Um, and I had some interest from the Pirates, which were a local team. Um, and I got to do a workout with them. So that was kind of like, yeah, 
you know, it might be a chance, but I didn't didn't really have any idea how how realistic it was at that point. Um, and then senior year barely got underway before COVID shut things down. Um, but once I I committed to Gardner Webb for my fifth year, that was kind of me going all in on baseball. And you know, I didn't know how realistic my shot necessarily was at that point. I kind of looked at it as you know, if I did well at Gardner Webb, then my shot was pretty good. But if I didn't do well, then I was right back where I started. Um, so that fifth year was was all in on baseball at that point. And and obviously, I think as the season went on, you probably started to realize that how how real it was. At what point did you start flirting with triple digits? Because, you know, again, that's that's like a, a milestone that, you know, no matter no matter how much you want to talk about, like, OK, yeah, there's a lot more to pitching and, and you know, there's a lot of other things that you're focused on. There's still like that that kid in us, I feel like that always wants to yeah. hit the mark on the radar gun and triple digits is just like a special club to be in. Uh, when, when did you first hit triple digits and, and, and what you must have thought that there was like a mistake at that point, right? Like you must have been pretty yeah, no, exactly. to, to, to do that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think supposedly it happened while I was at Gardner Webb, but I didn't see it myself. So, you know, I was like you said, like, nah, I can't be like, I don't believe it. Um, but the first time I got to see it for myself was after the draft with the athletics. Uh, one of those outings that I had one of the three outings I think I had in the ACL that year. So that was like the yeah, it's real. You can't you can't argue that it's not now. So it was really cool, really cool moment. And, you know, Vila is always like, competing against yourself i mean you can compete against other guys that have the number but you know each day out you're like this is where i want to be and you know reach back for a little extra but it's it reveal is fun you know there's more to pitching but it's fun there's no way around that well and there is more to pitching and, and what stood out to me even in you know again we talked about it before we started recording i said i just i'm so excited to, to watch you throw more this coming season because in the spurts that you know i got to see in the arizona fall league it was the confidence, not only in the fastball of like, here it is, try and hit it even in a, in a fastball count, right? 2 now you had the confidence you could blow by a guy, but the, the field is spinning, right? Like the curveball was was a really good pitch for you in the innings that you threw this year. Uh, is that always been there for you? Is that something that kind of came back even more so and you felt like it got even better for you? Um, and, and I'm eager to hear about the changeup as well, because I mean, I'm imagining a changeup working off of that fastball uh, will be pretty devastating, but you know, the curveball, it was really impressive coming off of, you know, again, such a big layoff, usually guys with with, you know, that had an arm issue, you know, trying to find that release point again, trying to find the command. It seemed like that kind of came back for you pretty quickly, uh, especially even with with that banger curveball. Yeah. Yeah. I threw back before I was throwing hard. I was throwing a slider and a curveball. And uh, my current breaking ball is I call it a slider, but like you're saying, curveball. It's kind of just a mix of the two. You know, I get good horizontal movement and also good vertical you know, down as well. Um, so I I have thrown it with a lot of confidence. And while I was coming back, there was a couple outings where I really didn't have it. So like you're saying, um, the release point, just, you know, having the feel for it. Um, and going back and forth between Lansing, Vegas, uh, Arizona. Like I've been surprised by how much the the climate and the area you're pitching in you know, affects next how much how much your breaking ball moves. So, like, I was in Vegas. I had a guy, one of the home runs I gave up my second outing. Um, I think I threw him three straight breaking balls, and he hit the third one out. But I, I dotted the first two, and I was like, man, I just, if I can just expand this one, he's, he's going to swing and miss at it. And I threw the same one, you know, right on the corner. But, you know, obviously he'd seen it the two pitches before, so he's ready for it. But just like the the fact that the ball wasn't quite moving as much as I was used to is uh, something I was going to have to adjust to. Um, but yeah, I feel really confident in you know what my breaking balls become. I feel like I can throw it in any count for a strike, for a swing and miss. You know, expand the zone. Um, but just you know, continuing to to hone in on you know backdooring it or backfooting it or you know down on the plate, down off the plate, all that. Um, I'm excited to get after that this year. Um, and then the changeup really through rehab. That was probably one of the biggest things that came out of it. It's just some real feel for a changeup that, you know, plays plays against hitters at any level. Um, the fastball helps me, but being able to throw my changeup in the zone or below the zone when I want to is going to be a huge weapon for me. And I think I'm, you know, miles ahead of where I was last year and even in college with the changeup. 
Well, I was going to say too, you know, usually when you're, you're a hard thrower with a good breaking ball, you, you, why, why go to the change up in college when you can yeah. kind of take care of guys without it. Uh, but obviously you're getting to this high level competition and also getting to some of these places in the PCL where the ball is, you mentioned just absolutely flies probably helps to have something that works at the bottom of the zone. What, mm-hmm. What's been, what kind of change up grip do you use and, and What's been the biggest challenge in in getting that pitch to develop? Because you mentioned, you know, it's it's miles ahead of where it was. You know, how did you get to to that miles ahead point uh, where you're at now, and where do you feel you're at going into this year with that pitch? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've been through through any kind of variables I can with a changeup, just trying to figure it out. Um, you know, some of it's like just throwing the zone, just first strike, like make it a BP fastball. It doesn't even have to move. And then, you know, the pitcher in me is like, you know, make it as nasty as you can. You want the movement. You want the the horizontal run. You want the sink. And I kind of just, during rehab, just forgot about all that. I was just playing around with grips, throwing different things. Um, and I kind of ended up just like, I take it like a two seam and then shift it about a quarter turn. So I'm throwing it kind of across the seams. And I, I have like a good feel for pulling with my, my middle and ring finger. And I'm not really trying to like superly get over the top of the ball and pronate it and get it to move more so just throwing it almost like a sinker since i i mean i throw so hard it's coming in at like 90 91 so it almost has that like sinker if i can get the sinker spin on it and then it just kind of moves on its own dies um and i i have a pretty good feel for it so really it was just trial and error man that's <laughs> that's all the change up was was just keep trying something keep banging your head against the wall until something finally works <laughs> Well, and you're seeing some of the best arms in, in in baseball, including the reigning Cy Young champ in the National League, kind of deploy that changeup that's almost not a changeup, right? It, it, it almost like breaks our brain when we see a changeup going at 92, 93, like Sandy Alcantara has done you yep. know, with the Marlins. Um, is that – do you look at any other guys in the big leagues uh, to, to kind of just – see what they do arsenal wise and see how they work off. Is there anybody that you kind of like to, to take a look at and see how they use their stuff and uh, just maybe take anything from? Yeah, I try to, I try to find pitchers with good comparisons. Um, You know, I can look at a player or a hitter's stats overall. And a lot of times some of their weak zones and things like that are good things to know, but you know, my stuff might not be, might not fall into that same bucket of like, you know, he's bad on, fastball or he rakes on fastball in but you know if i execute my fastball in at 99 like there's a good chance that's still going to be a pitch that he's not going to be able to do much with um so it's just kind of balancing playing a hitter's weaknesses but also sticking to my strengths um but on the changeup, i think my grip's actually really similar to to sandy's grip um so seeing him throw as hard as he does our arm slots really aren't quite the same charlie morton is one pitcher that has kind of a similar arm slot to me like kind of three quarter ish yeah. um but really find, finding a, a comp is really good as far as like sequencing what works to certain guys um and even in like new pitch development um you know what what can i do from my slot at my my velocity um, kind of seeing somebody that's already done it helps you kind of go about that in a different way. Yeah. So speaking to, to pitch development, you have been working on a cutter, right? And, and that's something that you're, you're incorporating this year, potentially. How's that progress going and, and, and what can you kind of add on, on that offering? Yeah, I was throwing it in spring training last year before the injury. Um, that was when it was pretty raw and new. Um, but I was really excited about the effectiveness of it then. Um, to especially the lefties, you know, just starting in middle, working it on their hands, just nothing they can really do with it. And, you know, as hard as I throw, it was coming in at about 95. So that's kind of just a, almost an outlier pitch at that point where it's like, you you don't see a lot of pitches like it. And I'm kind of looking at it as, you know, that could, could make me really special. um, In addition to my, my other plus pitches. Um, But as far as what the plan is this year, I haven't, I mean, I've been playing catch with it. Um, right now the focus is just you know building up um getting ready for the season it's not something that i'm i guess looking to as like a primary pitch right now but you know as the season goes on and you know i need a you know maybe a leg up or just like a different wrinkle or you know show another team something if i've seen them three times in two months um yeah i think that's that's definitely going to be an addition to the to the rep tour for sure 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking, I'm thinking of like off off the top of my head, a guy like Corbin Burns who finds that cutter way later in his career and and you know ends up turning into what he's turned into on that pitch. And and we're seeing organizations like the Yankees, top to bottom, preach that cutter and and the effectiveness that it has, but you can't teach the cutter at 95. So that's something that is 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 pretty unique to be able to to offer. Is that just a grip change and you throw it like a fastball or or is there something that you're you're kind of tweaking with there with that cutter uh, as you can yeah, see? I just take it. just take it like a four seam, shift it slightly off center. So I'm really trying to do if you think about it, like on a tilt axis, like my my fastball spins here. And if I get it to spin closer to, to 12 or even inside of 12, just on like this line, like you can't see the spin as a batter on it because it looks like a fastball spinning at such a high rate and then it just has that slight carry to the glove side um whereas it's taken off at your hands if you're a lefty or it's just riding away from you off your barrel if you're a righty so going to the pcl potentially or you know wherever you, you're going to pitch at the pcl I, I, probably for most of this coming season and and you will have to get through there to get to the big leagues that's that's always the interesting thing for you know prospects in 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 that division and, and on the western side of things because you see a lot of really good pitchers have inflated eras then go to the big leagues and have better eras it doesn't make sense yeah. but it, it's it's almost counterintuitive but when you see how the ball flies out there, it, it starts to make more sense. As a guy who, you know, likes to to throw the fastball kind of wherever and, and, and elevate it to blow by guys, but you work east west well too. But of course, a hundred elevated that'll always play. At the same mm-hmm. time, a guy can miss under it and it carries out of there because of how hard it comes in and it's a high spin fastball. Now, how do you balance the I want to blow by guys, I don't want to be afraid to challenge guys? But I also don't want to give up a ton of home runs in places where the ball just flies like it's the moon. Uh, is, is that something that you were cognizant of? Did you not really pitch long enough in the PCL to worry about that? But also in the Arizona Fall League, it's kind of the same thing. Now, how do you balance yeah. that, you know, keeping the ball in the yard, but not being afraid to attack guys and, and do what you do best, which is challenge them with the fastball and, and overpower them? Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, in my short, I, I think it ended up being about 30 innings total last year between regular season and Fall League. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far to say that I had a home run problem, but the long ball definitely, you know, was a factor in a lot of the runs that I did give up. Um, you know, I had a had a good job of, you know, keeping my walks down and, you know, there wasn't always a lot of guys on base. So the home runs didn't really kill me, but um, just kind of not being a predictable pitcher, I think, is what I'm going to have to do. Um, that's obviously what my strengths are. You know, I throw great fastballs, sliders good. Um, but you know, once I start sprinkling in the change up, the cutter, you know, still engaging this, those pitches are pitches that engage swings, um, you know, get weak contact, you know, guys puts their best swing on it, but the ball's just not where they thought it was going to be. Whereas, you know, I'm, I'm a fastball 70% of the time and an OO count or things like that. I felt like I was relatively predictable in my short time there, but that was also just the, you know, short outings, you know, working back, focusing on you know, health and just once you have some more innings under your belt, it's easier to focus on, you know, this is what I need to do to get this guy out. Um, Whereas last year I was trying to get guys out, but it was also just finish the year healthy, um, you know, learn what I need to learn. Um, But I did hear from a lot of guys in Vegas that, you know, the ERA is going to be up and obviously that's going to take a toll on you a little bit mentally. Yeah. You have to know that, you know, every, all our coordinators and directors and people know that too. So you know, you have to balance pitching to guys in ways that aren't going to get you hurt, but also, you know, preparing yourself for what the next step is. Cause that's, you know, everybody's goal. Nobody's goal is to stay in the PCL for the whole career. Yeah. Um, but it's just kind of like, like, you know, getting through that, you know, learning some stuff about you as a pitcher and, you know, taking what you can from, you know, what, what the league really forces you to do. And that's, you know, be more of a pitcher than sometimes a thrower. So your last like five outings or so of the season in the Arizona Fall League, you were stretched out to to three innings every single time, and and in those last two outings, you sat, you averaged over a hundred miles per hour with your fastball, and in both three inning spurts, uh, obviously you knew that you were just going three innings in those outings, right? So you don't have to worry maybe about pacing yourself as much, but you know now as you start to stretch out to five, six, maybe seven uh, going into this coming season. 
is there any level of of pacing yourself or or do you feel like that that triple digits kind of just happens like are, are you able to are you going to start to try to pace yourself and ease into it as the start goes on or is that something that you just kind of throw and don't really think about that yeah i mean since i haven't i haven't gone to extended pitch counts really since college um i wasn't a guy that had like a ton of velo velo fall off as i went on and in those outings i was throwing 100 plus pitches pretty much every week um so i think I think if I can stay efficient with my pitches and my innings and I don't see too many long innings, long at bats, um, I don't think I'm going to have a problem holding my velo, um, you know, into the fifth, sixth innings. Obviously, time will tell. And, you know, if I have to, you know, turn it down a couple clicks to stay in the game till the seventh inning instead of exiting in the fourth or fifth, you know, that's going to have to be the decision that's made um, to stay a starter. Um, but at this point, I don't I don't feel like I need to, you know, pull the reins back to to stay in the game longer. I'm, I'm coming at you with my best stuff every at bat, every pitch. Um, and that's what you have to do against guys at such a high level is you can't take pitches off because they're not taking pitches off either. After, you know, you, you mentioned kind of being fresh because of the, the shortened season in terms of the pitches that you threw. Now going into the spring now, how have you felt so far and, and, and how eager are you to get kind of back out there given that you probably feel – like you didn't throw that much last year and, and how well you finished. I'm sure you're chomping at the bit to get going here. What, what's kind of been the focus for you through camp so far and, and, and how eager are you to kind of start to get stretched out and, and start to try to go deeper into ball games? Yeah, man, I'm really excited for this year and to get, you know, hopefully a full season's of work uh, under my belt. Um, but, you know, one of the things I did learn last year, you know, I came into camp really hot and like really ready to go. Yeah. Um, but it is a long season. So, you know, I'm kind of trying to pace myself a little bit in that sense mentally that, you know, it is a long year. And, you know, while I want to go out and dominate, and I'm going to do my best each time out. You know, maybe the games here in March are the times that, you know, I, I work on my location. I work on, you know put myself in the best position to succeed each week. Um, and then once the season hits, that's when it's time to really compete. Um, so, uh, the competitor in me has a hard time doing that, but that's something I've been actively trying to work on is, you know, letting, you know, this spring, the spring training season kind of play out and, you know, I'm really hitting my stride at the end of spring instead of, you know, kind of just trying to get to the regular season and, you know, dominating guys in spring is great. Um, but I want to do it all year long. So it's just kind of that longevity of things that I'm focused on. Aside from from dominating hitters and and you know pitching for the duration of the season, are there any other goals specifically you know Mason Miller focus that you have for for this season as you go into it? Which you know I, I know last year was technically the first full season, but I feel like this is really that first full season where you're hopefully throwing from from day one, like you said, to to the final day of the season, uh, wherever that may be. What what are, what are some specific goals outside of you know just just health and um, you know, just continue to do what you're doing as, as you go into 2023. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like you said, health's number one, you know, you can't, can't overlook that, but uh, I'm just excited to, you know, put myself in the best position to succeed, you know, each day, each week, each month. Um, you know, I never know what opportunities are going to be presented to me, whether, you know, that's just based on how well I'm doing or if guys go down ahead of me or, you know, what, whatever it ends up being, um, like last year, you know, I was in high A for three weeks and, you know, I couldn't have guessed that I'd be in triple A the next week, yeah. but, you know, I, I have a goal making it to the major leagues and, you know, whether that's, you know, sooner than later or later than, you know, I expect, uh, I just, that's the opportunity I'm working for, you know, each day. And, you know, I hope that, I put myself in a position where that's a, a realistic possibility by, you know, the end of the season. When you got to Oakland, one of the last few questions I'll ask you here, I, I know obviously they did their due diligence uh, in drafting you in the third round, given your story and, uh, you know, given your background, that that was a, a pretty, pretty exciting spot to get taken uh, as a guy that was a Div division three player, then at Gardner Webb to, to get selected there. So obviously they knew what you were capable of, but did you ever catch yourself maybe surprising some people in the, in the Oakland A's org uh, with what you were, what you were doing on the mound and, and what you were starting to, sh to show and flash um, as the year went on and maybe at camp. And then of course, going to high A and triple A, like, I mean, what you're doing is, is things that you'd probably expect from, you know, a top 10 pick that everybody knows and has the, the big fanfare. And you mentioned like you're starting to see a lot more people, you know, 
catch your you're catching a lot more people's attention overall and a lot more people are starting to realize oh that mason miller guy he can throw but were there any points in which last year where people are like whoa who is this guy and where did that come from yeah yeah no i think i think just my story like as a whole you know each stop on the the journey has been not necessarily that people have doubted me but it's like you know i have to prove myself before Mm -hmm. people are like yeah you know he's the he's the real deal um so i think at this point you know it's when I got drafted, it was, you know, his control was kind of iffy. And I think I, I kind of silenced that towards the end of last year. And now it's a, if he can stay healthy or, you know, it's not a question of the stuff. It's, you know, whether I'm going to be able to put myself on the field um, to succeed and, you know, help my team win, you know, every five days or whatever it ends up being. Um, but, yeah, I think I think the A's knew that I was I was a talent for sure. That's why they, they took a chance on me in the third round and, um, I don't know if they thought I'd be this good, but I'm sure they're, they're, they're pretty pleased to, you know, the progression that I've been able to make, even with the time that I've missed. A hundred percent. I think they, they're, they've got to be thrilled uh, with what you've been able to do so far. And I guess the last question would be, you know, what do you feel like you you've learned, you know, like just through this whole process going all the way back to, to division three and, you know, how, how that can maybe be something that can be repurposed to, to anybody else in their life. Obviously not everybody's going to have a, a situation where they start a division three school, find out that they're a type one diabetic and then end up throwing a hundred. Uh, that's, that's a very, very, very rare outcome, but there's a lot of things and a lot of challenges that people kind of face and, you know, find things out about themselves and find ways to get better and stronger as they go on. And for, for you, I feel like that, that's a late stage for most people, right. It, with type one diabetes to kind of figure out that that's what they're dealing with. And, and this had to be a, a really quick turnaround of like, okay, here we go. Uh, how, what did you kind of learn through that process? And, and what do you think the biggest takeaway is over the last handful of years of, of what you've learned maybe from a life perspective about yourself uh, or beyond that? Yeah, I think, I think there's always an opportunity to learn something from every person, you know, whether or not they have as much talent as you or as smart as you or as gifted as you in certain, certain things, you know, there's always something you can learn from, a person's routine or, you know, the things that they do day to day to get them in the position they need to succeed, um, whether it's because of somebody or in spite of the things they do. Uh, I think there's always something out there that you can take and learn from people. So from my Division three experience, you know, I, I learned a lot. And, you know, guys there may not be on the same level as, you know, guys at Gardner Webb or guys in professional baseball. But you know, I learned a lot and those guys are some of my closest friends to this day. So, um, you know, there's, there's so many good people out there and, you know, just seeing people for who they are and, you know, how, how they can help you or how you can help them. Um, I think that that's a really big thing for people in this world. That's awesome, man. And, and again, I think that the, the story, the journey is, is, is something that, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you get asked about a lot, but for good reason, again, because of, of how remarkable it is and also how remarkable you have been on the mound over the last you know year or so. And again, cannot wait to see what you're going to do this coming season. Uh, this is the last question. What can Oakland A's fans expect from Mason Miller uh, at the player and the person? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to lay it all out there. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to work my, my rear off as much as I can to get to where I need to be. I'm excited about the guys coming up through the system and the guys I'm making friends with now. Um, I think, I think we're going to have some, some stuff to be excited about in Oakland in the next couple of years. Um, and, you know, as the guys that are up there now that, you know, in this short time that I was at big league camp these past two weeks, I definitely learned a lot. Um, so I look forward to, to getting the opportunity to, to help the A's win in the future. Looking forward to following that, man. Thank you again so much for taking the time. Best of luck this season. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun watching you throw on the mound. I think a lot of people are going to find out. I think I was saying maybe one of the more anonymous triple digit throwers in, in minor league baseball right now is going to start to get on a lot of radars this coming season. And, and thank you for coming on the show to you know kind of help get you on even more radars, because I don't think people uh, outside of the Oakland org should know just how talented you are and, and what you may, might have in store this coming season. So thanks again, Mason. Really excited to see what you're going to do this year. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me on and, you know, making me accessible on your platform. So I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise.